Sports listeners, I'm your host, Erica Salder, the Queen of Teen. Please tune in every, every single, single Tuesday. Tuesday at 9 a.m. This is a whole hour. Yes. Hour. 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 Power hour. I've sent up our teen sports listeners and all those people and businesses that support those teen athletes. How are we all doing this morning? Pretty yeah. good. Come on Wonderful. now. Yeah. All I know is we got bread this morning from the sourdough bread lady. How are you doing, Victoria? I am doing fantastic. <laughs> so happy to be here. The energy nice. and the uh, wonderful, beautiful community of Santa Barbara. I love you so much. I love it, too, because <laughs> it's been so many weeks, because it's been Without so bread. wet and rainy. <laughs> but we have bread today. Yes. I'm so happy. You can have it with your soup, you can have it with your <laughs> salad, and you can have it as a snack with just oil or a piece of avocado, and be happy. Be happy. So why, why, when everyone tells us not to eat bread, Victoria, uh, if we're trying to be all gluten free and healthy, why should we eat your bread? <laughs> yeah. First of all, if you have any problem with your immune system, your doctor will definitely tell you get, get off gluten and dairy, and uh, which is easy uh, because they, doctors don't don't have time to educate. And it's easy to say, just stop eating it. The, the bread I make is not from wheat. It's made of spelt. It's, uh, I sprout it, and then I make flour out of it, and then I ferment it. The fermentation process takes three, four days. During fermentation, um, uh, it, uh, I cures vitamin B, complex vitamin B that is so essential for your body, especially if you don't want to eat meat or some people just want to be plant-based, it's perfect. You can turn it into a food. <laughs> I turn it, yeah, exactly. You turn it from an from a, uh, empty carb, and you turn bread from an empty carb into a real food. A real food. What it was originally meant to be, the staff food. of life. Exactly, yeah. and I, it takes three, four days. I happen to have time. That's my advantage. And I know that listeners out there, they most of you don't have so much time to wait for the bread to rise and to mix it and to play with it and to love it and to <laughs> raise it. Have a relationship with it. Have a relationship. Like. <laughs> and uh, I understand. The, I, I, I would like, my vision is to find a community or a place where I could teach people how to bake bread to do demonstrations to uh, so you can take it home uh, when maybe one day you will have time and you can use your knowledge to teach your children or grandchildren have you done a youtube video yet i have a youtube video Ah, yes but it's uh, i know that the people have very short attention span so it's like 59 seconds well, oh, wow. <laughs> that's a good introduction, but I bet we you know. there's some folks out there who would just love a, a step-by-step yeah. instruction a little bit longer than, uh, than a minute would, would probably be uh, in service. So uh, I, I'd like to see problem. another one out there. Maybe we can get some of our uh, students who have community service hours to do us a little video, a video? of how to make bread. <laughs> oh, wow. That would be great. Yeah. yeah. Maybe do, we can. do you know about public access TV? Yeah. Do we still have that here? Okay, really? if you know about that, you can have a show, The Bread Lady. Do people ah, still watch yes. TV, though? <laughs> yeah, sure. Do they still listen you, to the radio? Are you yeah. sure? Yeah. I barely watch TV. <laughs> See? <laughs> For me, I personally, I barely watch TV. Cause, like, but if it was The Bread Lady. No, no, no. So where are the youngsters living these days, huh? Uh, On YouTube. YouTube, YouTube. Facebook, uh, YouTube. Instagram, and yeah. Snapchat, social, social media. media. So there, there's your exposure there. Yeah. 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 Thank you for making me feel like a dinosaur. <laughs> hey, it just is what it is, you know? Move along. Yeah, but most TV shows are also available on YouTube, so... Yeah, they can do that's, both. You that's can do awesome. Both. You can record it on the TV and get it posted up on YouTube. Yeah, I'd love that if somebody there wants to... Um, practice your video taping skills. Just to let everyone know, there's a very popular TV show in Korea. Uh, uh, it's watching people eat food, <laughs> and it's gotten so popular that uh, there some of these these young youngsters are making a lot of money just by sitting down with a huge plate of food and eating different things. And some of these videos are a half an hour, hour long, and millions of people watch other people eat food, and they eat with them. They sit down at their meals and they eat together. So. 
there's a phenomenon amongst young people that are interested in actually spending time watching people eat. So if they want to watch them eat, you could think they might want to watch them cook too. Huh? Cook hey. and eat. <laughs> in the house, we have Kevin Lee, Vision Diego High School. Returning, taking some video again for us. So um, in China, you have such shows, eating food shows. Do you watch it or is it internet or TV? What do you guys do? Okay, that is actually very popular not only in South Korea, it's actually very popular in Asia right now. Uh, People see? do like casting thing, it's yes. just like online things for them doing anything. It's anything. not like about food. It anything. could be like they're sitting in Starbucks and they can just literally just do That's that. That's right. And people if like but like those people most likely are like um they are attractive, relatively attractive than the public. So they do that and people like to watch them and will donate to us like some gift that worth a uh, certain amount of value so that they can earn money in that way. Ah, so that's becoming like a yes. really, really big mm -hmm. um, part of um, culture. In that's Asia. right. That's right. Yeah. Well, that's right. You know what it is? Our society is uh, crafting different ways to share beauty. There, there is a beauty mm. in enjoying the that's the right. breaking of bread, and so it becoming something that's happening over the internet or over the TV. It's just a different way of sharing something that's inside that we all just really respond to, which is that sense of community, the sense of beauty, and the importance of food. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, the bread and anything else that you want to share, like you're saying, uh, it's that's that's how you can expose people to, and they'll they'll watch it. They'll watch it. I'll be there eating the bread, and they can watch you cook it and me eat it. Yeah, <laughs> and then they can come with me to the Weight Watchers meeting. Yeah, and I'll get on the scale and say, "See, I didn't gain any weight because I ate. I lost a lot. I lost a lot of weight with the bread lady because of this. Bread. Yes, this and bread full of beauty." <laughs> <laughs> you know, I had to recently look up a pre-diabetic diet for a good friend of mine. And one of the important things is you can't just cut carbs out of your diet. You have to learn about your food and you have to learn how to eat the carbs that your body is going to digest in such a way that it gives you the nutrients that you need. Right. Yeah. Nice. Very Brian nice. Falk. Hello, good how morning. How close are we to uh, get that PhD? Uh, huh? In a in a five-year span, I'm in the last year. So. Woo! I love it. Ryan, the end of this, Ryan. the end of this year, uh, I, I, by I October, to, that's my goal. I saw him a couple of weeks ago, and I tell you, for ladies out there, you know when these expensive surgeries. If if you ever, you know, you got those little. Um, what did you do for me? Oh, oh yeah, so split. we did we did some um, some work on the veins on the on her legs. That's a good way yes. to say it. Work on the Ver veins. Varicose veins right. are the bigger veins, but there's also spider veins, right. the little purple veins that we get as we get older. Um, right. That you notice usually on the legs. Ageless but, and timeless. But they can come on any time. Right. Uh -huh. You know, men get them too, and Seriously. it can be anywhere. But the legs are common from right. well, sitting I, and standing a lot. Can I say? Wait, okay. So he didn't have to wear goggles or nothing. You know, I didn't say clear. I you know, gloves. nothing. And I tell you, it, three weeks. Gone. Okay, so, so what, what? Spending all this money is nuts. It didn't even well, hurt. Well, listen, I want to share an experience. <laughs> I, I, I went what? to a, a well known, very popular uh, dermatologist, and I spent $350 and had painful shots on these spider veins, and they did zippo, and I'm still paying for it. <laughs> and they are still smiling at me from my legs. <laughs> And what? life life as a roadmap does not go well with e-harmony. Yeah. So me, what did you do to Eric? Well, let me just back up just a little bit. Right, what we're, what I'm we're, saying, what we're just saying, ladies. About. Little secret here. That's all I got to say. Right so, here. <laughs> Queen Adina is telling you some words here. Well, for, so go for, 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 for thousands of years, um, bloodletting, as it's f uh, informally called, has been around in just about every culture around the world. And it's still practiced in many places today around the world. This was a technique uh, I learned in Chinese medical school for or getting rid of old dead blood because that's what spider veins are. That's mostly, mostly dead blood cells that have um, accumulated that have risen to the surface and the body has not been able to move them through and they just hang out there. So the idea is to to prick it, to drain it, and get rid of the old dead stuck blood. And the body's always making new blood, so um, usually that goes away after a few a few times. Now, I didn't go there for that. Um, I have to interject. That was just okay, a side, that was a side thing. I had something else. But, <laughs> and while he was there, because he's like this, you know, he you know analyzes everything, and he says, look, I want to get rid of these. And I, like, before I knew it, he, he was in there. And so uh, it, you can it approach hurt? it. You no. can approach it from a, a health standpoint, which is that's first and foremost for me is, is health, because you want... 
blood to be f- f- freely circulating in the body. Um, when it's not, you have soreness and pain and, and even more serious things like um, tumors and cancer. That's that's part of blood stagnation. Um, additionally, yes, additionally, uh, you know, physically and aesthetically, um, it's not we in our culture we don't think it's very attractive so that's a secondary benefit of bloodletting but first and foremost it's it's from a health standpoint is to Seriously. to get rid of the old dead blood and when it comes out it's dark purple or black and that's a sign blood should not look like that color blood should look bright red How but do when you do it? oh you, oh al- alcohol swab it you can do this at home, by the way. There's nothing special. Alcohol Get swab it. Out. Are you um, squeeze I it a little bit. Take home? a little lancet, you know, like a little prick for di- di- you know, diabetics, a little lancet. Yeah. Prick it and squeeze. And out comes the, the purple black Get blood. Out. That's it. <laughs> yeah. You too. You know, wear, wear some gloves. <laughs> That's my next YouTube video, actually, is do some bloodletting. It's one of my favorite things because they're very satisfying because it's oh it comes God. out, you can hey, see it, and smiles. then after a while, okay, it's the red blood comes out. First, first purple blood. He really Black likes blood, doing it. Then, then you see the red blood, and like, ah, oh, there's the fresh blood. Mm. The old blood comes out, and there's the new blood. That's the. Mm. It's it's very objective. You can see mm. the purple blood, black blood, and now the red blood, and that's that's the sign that you've Actually, cleared it out. It's, it's weird, so but. you have to be a little careful. You know, you, you can risk infection. So you have to alcohol swab and, and put gloves on and all that kind of thing. But uh, it's something I teach my patients to do if they want at home, and uh, it's just it's a it's a therapeutic thing that's very easy. You don't have to spend hundreds of dollars or even thousands of dollars ripping out veins or doing. Wow. surgeries now there's there's a, there's different levels to it i mean varicose veins are the thicker veins and that might require something additionally but i'm talking about the, the small spider veins so so they you know at a certain age we had these lingerie parties now we can have the spider vein removal parties <laughs> <laughs> you left me speechless on that one listen um, michael baker just walked in the house oriented uh, look, look michael uh, baker just walked in the house but we gotta take a break all right hey i don't know what's going on but he's got an umbrella he's got all kinds of stuff he's got a squeegee with him we're gonna talk to him about that after the break this is eric Asalda. we got so many new commercials check them out we'll be back with more after these messages We are back, and this is the Santa Barbara Teen Sports Radio Show. I am your host, Erica Sola, the Queen of Teen. Please tune in every single Tuesday at 9 a.m. Yes. 9 a.m. Hello. 9 a.m. No, I, I gotta, I'm sorry. I know no dead air, but I've just got to stare at this guy. What am I going to, what am I going to do? I got to stare. You know, it's been a couple of weeks. You've been really busy. We've had a um, lot. What's today's date, D? 314. 14. All right, but it's been uh, you've been you've been on this crusade and I got I got to you know rewind a little bit. I don't even know what day it was about 3 weeks ago, right? 3 weeks ago and I I I put out a call to you and I I hear this shuffling, bustling, whatever and <laughs> I I got to call you right back. I'm like, "All right. Wow. A little rude." Okay. <laughs> Just like, Clearly. geez, Marion Joseph. All right, yeah. so I'm waiting because now, you know, he's intrigued me. All right, no. wait a couple of minutes, you know. I actually, I waited about 40 minutes. Call him back. Nothing. I write into voicemail. Now I think he's mad at me, right? Like, huh, what? what is this attitude, right? Wait again. I call Sal, right? Oh, there you go. <laughs> that's, that's how you get through. <laughs> call, call the Godfather. Like, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> And he goes, I call him, all right? And then he goes, and and he goes, I go, where are you? He goes, uh, 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 you know, because he stutters. Yeah, yeah. I, I got to call you back. And I'm like, why Why is everybody like, got to call me back? I call, you pick up. And he goes, uh, and he's ordering. You're ordering people around. Ordering, you know, do this, whatever. Mm-hmm. Surf Pro is there. I go, Surf yeah. Pro is there. I go, what's what's going on? He goes, I got a problem here. I got two flooded rooms. I got, you got two flooded rooms. Okay, I just got off the roof. You just got off the roof? Where are you? He goes, I'm at the club. What? I'm thinking Galita, because that's all I know, right? He goes, Carp. I go, Carp? I'm thinking I'm thinking the gym floor. The gym, what's yeah, well, wrong with the gym floor? Is yeah. that the first thing I said? Uh, absolutely. The f- gym floor. He yeah. goes, no, the gym floor is fine. Okay, take over. The gym floor is fine. Right, thank God. Um, it, it was uh, with the heavy rains. Uh, the Carp Club, it, the Carp Club celebrated its fiftieth year. Mm. That building is over forty years old. Mm. It's a flat roof. Mm. Uh, not a good, not a good mix with heavy rains. Um, so I got a call from our uh, operations person at uh, I was at Rotary. I got a phone call, and she's and Jamie called me and she said, uh, Michael, we got a problem. Which is never good. That's never a good thing to hear. So I uh, said, what's going on? And got her on the phone. She explained, we have water gushing in 
uh, into the into the arts and crafts room, and it's going into the resource room. And immediately we said, well, we got to get the kids out of there. So we made arrangements. The kids were off from school because it was Friday uh, for President's Day weekend. So we got the kids out of the building. And then I left Santa Barbara. This is, those of you that were driving on that Friday will know. I left Santa Barbara at about 1 o'clock. And I got down to CARP just before 3. That's how bad the traffic was. Wow. And I took the back way. I didn't take the one-on-one wasn't moving at all. So got down the carb, got to our carb club, and I've said it before. I'll say it again. This is why I, I, you know, one of the biggest reasons I love my job is the people that work for us were mopping this place up, um, keeping it going. They came in. Uh, yeah, we had, we had we had we had one of our staff members, uh, David, who uh, wasn't even on duty, um, showed up, and I and I he I, I overheard him because this is my club, man. I've, I grew up here. I got to come here and help out. So I guess this is, this is what it's all about. So we we were figuring out we, we, what we're going to do. And we had standing water in the arch and crash, and it was ankle, ankle deep and rising. Uh, ankle deep and rising. And we figured, you know what, we gotta we got to get this water out of here as best we can. Contacted the company to come do restoration. And, and um, the next day, the rains were heavy on Saturday as well. And realizing, okay, the water's coming in from the roof. I gotta go. I gotta go up to this roof and get this water off. And no, I'm not gonna let a staff member up. I said you can't go up there. I don't want you going up to the roof. I'll go up. If anybody's gonna get hurt, it's gonna be me. So went up there and was for for a good while pushing water off the roof. And that was a great workout. It was a fantastic workout. But that's when Erica called me. <laughs> so what are you doing? What's going on? Uh, you know, I'm a little busy right now. Uh, Seriously. Uh, she goes, you're not. She, I said, I'm. I'm but she goes, you're really not kidding. I said, I'm pumping water off the roof, getting water off the roof. Well, I said, I got a sump pump. I don't care. My backyard was, D- Dominique was back there. Okay. Yeah, and we were trying to keep your office right. from flooding. Okay. But I, I would have sacrificed my office. Okay. So you didn't fall through the roof, Michael. <laughs> I'm sorry to take to you. Okay? Yeah, I appreciate that. New Thank York, you. You're from New York. Yeah, all right. Sal New loves Yorker. you. I have Sal. to love you. I was looking out my back. I figured I got about an hour and a half. I go, what? Where's the sump pump? Well, you're the sump pump. That's who the sump pump is, Michael Baker, right? And that's my wife's nickname for me too, by the way, which is a whole other story. I, that and the bloodletting and everything I mean, it's really reminded me of my wife. Yeah, that's where you met her on yeah. the roof. I met her on a roof on at a carpet. bloodletting convention. Yes, that's where I met my wife. Um, it's a long story. It's a really, it's a really unique group of people that meet for that ceremony. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I really need help. I clearly need help. Don't, uh, don't ever do that again, though. If there's lightning, seriously. Oh, there was no lightning. Okay. There was no I bet lightning. You do know that. Because were, yeah, absolutely. That you will light up your life in a way you do yeah, not want to. Yeah, no, no, no. I would never do it if it was lightning, but it was, it was, um, you know, we had to get the water off the roof and we got as much off as we could. And um, we had several people that contacted Erica, first phone call I got. We had several, and she's like, so, okay, well, let's see what we can do. I know what that means. They're going to start spinning the web and figuring out, you're reaching out to everybody, and all of a sudden you start to get these calls from people saying, okay, we can help you with this, we can help you with that, we'll do this, we'll do that. And we got an estimate, and it looks like it's about a $150,000 project to fix the roof, but it's going to be better than ever. Uh, Don't you have insurance? Insurance won't cover that because it's considered Oh, it's an act of God. Yeah. And God is maybe not in feeling such a good mood lately. I I don't know if God wasn't a club alum. I don't know what the deal is there, but... uh, no, we uh, we we we're gonna do everything we can to. Uh, wow. uh, the, the immediate concern was we got to get the kid, like I said, get the kids out of the building. And the second concern is we get, how quickly can we reopen this building because it's we get over hundred kids to go there every day. So is it we, closed, Mike? No, we opened that Tuesday. Uh, we did not miss a day uh, yeah. operation that we were Bravo. scheduled to be open. <laughs> so um, and that's because of volunteers. That's great people we have and. Um, Folks came down and yeah, the clubs and it's it, we're gonna get a new roof. It's gonna happen. We're gonna, we're in the process of raising the money. So anybody that's listening, we do have a GoFundMe page. Of course, you can certainly contribute to that. Uh, how do you find the GoFundMe page? You know, I, that's a great question. I don't even know how to tell people how to find the GoFundMe page. You can go to our you can go to our website, unitedbg.org. You'll see it on there. Uh, but you can you can uh, I would imagine. I think it's on Facebook too. It's on our fa- yeah Facebook page. But uh, you can you always get things through our unitedbg.org website. And contact Teen Sports Radio because Erica will connect you up. 
Yeah, Erica's Erica's done a pretty good job for us. He's, you're all right. Uh, it's on the website on Teen Sports Radio as well. We have Robert Burroughs. Um, he's been promoting, promoting, promoting. And I know a lot of things that you can't say because a lot of things have been done anonymously. But yes. it, you can say amounts of anonymous uh, monies, maybe, just an anonymously. Yeah. had an individual came up to me, uh, another great program that I promote the heck out of it's a group called Cars and Coffee on Sundays at Mo- in Montecito there's great just tremendous supporters of the, of the clubs a lot of charities but Boys and Girls Club particularly especially our rally they support that big time I had a gentleman that came up to me who's been a supporter of the clubs says you know what I don't do GoFundMe pages I, I don't do that because people see my name uh, I don't like to do that he said um, you know we normally give you 25000 he said we're going to give you fifty. Wow uh, towards this the roof. is hard so, hey, thank you uh, oh, awesome. this is and hard Really, really good people. So that's fantastic. That's what it's all about. Love it. We also had a nice um, roof removal. Yes, yes. So, um, gentlemen, I was hoping I was going to be able to be my guest, but apparently, with all the damage that's still out there, he's working quite a bit. Uh, David Doherty got an email from David Doherty with Eagle Roofing, and they said that they would come out and they're going to remove the old roof. Um, and uh, dispose of it for no cost. That's a huge savings. Huge savings to the boys. Huge. Huge. That's that's amazing. Yeah. People step up. You know, you just got to give them an opportunity. And people really do love to help, and and especially for a good organization like yours. Well, you know, it's it's hard. Honestly, it's really hard when when you're... um, I, I shouldn't say it's hard. You really find out what the community's made of when you have trouble, That's when there's right. an issue that comes up and you find That's out right. the people who are really behind what you're doing. And we're finding those folks big time. Um, these are, you know, an adage I always tell people, if you want to find out who your best board members are, have a crisis. <laughs> the ones who pick up the phone who's, when you're going through tough times, those are the best board members you have. And this is, these are the best supporters we have. They're the ones that are stepping up right uh, now. Well, I know Dr. D will stick around for like a couple of minutes because I know you wrote up something. So, Dave, what we're going to do for you, God, uh, Michael's going to draft up something, yep. and we're going to promote you and your business, uh, give you a little bit of a commercial for uh, Teen Sports Radio, and That's we're awesome. going to for a year. All right. We'll That's do it for so a year, awesome. right? Because we love so awesome. people. So that awesome. support the community like you. So let's take a little break. This is Eric Assault of the Queen of Tea. We'll be back with a lot more after these messages. We are back, and this is the Santa Barbara Teen Sports Radio Show. I am your host, Eric Assault of the Queen of Teen. Please tune in every single Tuesday at 9 a.m. GP Homestay. Woo! Cindy's back. <laughs> I mean, what the GP stands for. What does it stand for? Green, green Planet. Yeah, I love it. Oh, love oh wow. It. Go play. Go wow. play. <laughs> play. Go play. No, uh, Green Planet. I know okay. that. Wow. Okay. So you read, you saw the video. Obviously, I, we all know who's in touch with everything. <laughs> As I'm not the big reader. Yes, I'm a host and parent, and I love the GP Homestay website because it has it's filled with so much information to help with hosting the students. Really appreciate it. Absolutely. I, I got to say, GP is absolutely the Bacara Okay, of all hosting. I will say that. Uh, absolutely. Because I've been um, part of other programs, and Cindy, you knock it out of the park. I mean, because what I like best about your program is that you have really integrated all the host parents together. So you really do feel like you are with it, a part of a community. Thank because you. Because you really m- make it very welcoming. Um, I like the getting to meet everybody before and you involve the parents and the kids and you always it, you have so many r- really fun events. It's really kind of fun for I mean, we've done so many really neat things. So I really appreciate that. Yeah, I, I mean, a big thanks to both um, to you and D. I mean, I don't think. I could work as hard as I am now without such great hosts and such great students, of course. Mm. Like, that's what keeps me motivated to keep doing my job every day. Well, part of what you do for the kids is you're a voice for them. And I so appreciate that because in any family, sometimes there are things that happen where there's conflicts. And it's really nice to have uh, someone who's an in-between party who can hold space for both people and make sure communication happens. And I've just been thrilled at watching your ability to help students from a different culture and a different language be able to communicate and integrate into all of our families. It's just been beautiful. Thank you. And, you know, 
I, I never thought I'd be good at being the middle person, but it's always great to kind of hear both sides of the story and piece it all together and help everybody kind of understand and have a harmonious family. Now, is Santa Barbara, in Santa Barbara, is Bishop your only school up in Santa Barbara? Because I don't even know the answer to that. Yes, Bishop is my only school in the Santa Barbara area. Um, I do cover two other uh, schools in Thousand Oaks and Ventura. Okay, so uh, as of right now, we're still looking for host families, am I right? Correct. Okay. Uh, Santa Barbara probably is uh, the one area where I have the least amount of hope, um, Mm -hmm. sorry, least amount of hosts, and I really want to get that number up. Okay. So, um, because we have definitely have more new students coming in. And then what I'd like to do, because I'm just, I'm just filled with glee right now, okay, and happiness. <laughs> and, you know, we need a roof for um, the boys club. So, I'm thinking, if anybody mentions, you know, that they heard it on the show, all right, so would it be okay? So, for the, the little referral thing for the deal, we could give it to the boys club? Is that Okay. <laughs> Yeah, if the referral, okay. if, you know, if it comes from here, yes. If because okay, Dominique and I don't care, is that okay? <laughs> yeah, you guys get right? to do decide what you want to do with. We your want to give it to the boys' club. Is I that think okay? that's a great idea. Oh, stop it, Michael Baker! Say, <laughs> Erica, are you kidding? This would be wonderful. Okay, good. Because Terry Cooper looked at me. No, we don't want. No, yes, we do. Oh, we Terry was it. all for that. <laughs> it's kidding. a great idea, Erica. I think I heard says, an yes, from her. Yeah. I'm, I'm in shock. <laughs> <laughs> so. Um, Folks out there might be wondering what are the requirements for being a host and what is the remuneration other than the joy of hosting kids from another country, which is wonderful. I feel like our, our requirements are really simple. I mean, we always, we want good hosts with good intentions, um, as long as you can provide a, a safe home for a student, um, you know, with them having their own bath, I'm um, sorry, their own bedroom um, and a bathroom to use and provide three meals a day for a student and as well as take them to and from school. That's what we're really looking for. And any, what we do is any of our current hosts that, um, uh, are able to refer us new hosts, we are giving a $300 bonus for any approved hosts that we do get. Can, well, can I put our, our, one of our students on the spot? Nico. Oh, come, come here, Nico. Please. Nico, come, come on shout down. Out. Here, come Nico. Shout out to, to your parents. Yes. Well, this is, this is your opportunity on the radio. Speak out to your parents and your grandparents and say hi. <laughs> Uh, Hi. <laughs> <laughs> tell them. Tell them in Chinese. Say, give them your love in Chinese. Oh, uh, 我很想你们. It means I miss you. Yeah. Aww. Aww, that's adorable. That's beautiful. Okay. So how about this? So, um, as far as your experience in Santa Barbara, would you um, say that it's been um, something that you would recommend other? Um, students in China to, to take advantage of? Mm. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. mm. so, so you can express it in Chinese. You don't have to say it in English. Say, yeah. hey, say come give China. it a try. Yeah. Okay. So if you're listening and you want, you're thinking about coming to Santa Barbara and going to school here, um, if you wanted to recommend Santa Barbara and uh, would you recommend it to any Chinese student, what would you do? Well, of course I will. First of all, we, um, <laughs> of course, yes, of course I will. Yeah, I would stay at Erica's this. house. <laughs> yeah, Erica's house. <laughs> Definitely the first choice. Is, well, you know, I've been here for um, around three years, and the first thing I realized is the environment is extremely incredible. Um, it's like it's just a beautiful town. Like I'm basically, I can't use a word to describe the weather here, how beautiful it is, except for the past couple of weeks it's been a little bit crazy but like <laughs> during other seasons it's a uh, fantastic places to travel and you know a fantastic places that def- is definitely going to help you to um you know lean on to the society better and which you can fit in here um well just better than everywhere else i would say yeah, and yeah, of course, definitely, I will. <laughs> well, plus, he's a, he's a senior, okay, and Nico here is a sophomore, so by the time Nico gets to be a senior, he's going to be kicking it really well. Yeah. That's it, most you definitely. Made, exactly. I had, to, sure you would. Yeah. I had to tell Nico, thank you so much, because Nico is very, very shy, and the mm-hmm. fact that he popped up on the, ra- on the radio and said hi is fantastic. That's thank you, Nico. Yeah. Woo! Yeah. 
Oh. Do, we, do we have time for one more question? Yeah, sure. So back to being a, being a host, um, there are a lot of folks out there who maybe are considering hosts. What are what are some of the um, the difficulties or drawbacks um, or challenges that one might have being being a host? A lot of a lot of what I hear is a lot of hosts are afraid of the the um, communication not being able to communicate the cultural barriers but I mean it's just like having your own children you're going to have to show them things not just tell them how to do something or expect everybody to know that uh, how everything runs in America or in your own home Um, so it's definitely a process is there any training or any education enculturation if you will of the new student through your program to help them understand the difference in the cultural signals I mean I have to tell you a funny story (laughs) I, I had a, a it, my very first student was a Korean girl mm-hmm. and a lovely girl, but she was very polite. You know, her head was down and she didn't look at me. And and then she said that her, the, her, the man who brought her left her and she said she takes showers at night. And so I thought, that's great because I take mine during the day. And I put my two thumbs up like, you know, and I made a really happy face. She thought I was mentally ill because she'd never seen an adult with that much expression on her face. <laughs> and she went in to her bedroom, and I swear to you, she did not come out for three days. I don't know how that woman held her water, what she ate. I mean, this girl did not come out. That's, that's true. And I, I, you have more stories about that, too. That was funny. Too. But listen, that's so bad. Let's take a little break. All right, Dr. D says it's go time. This is Erica Salda. We'll be back with more after these messages. We are back, and this is the Santa Barbara Teen Sports Radio Show. I am your host, Erica Salda, the queen of teen. Please tune in every single Tuesday at 9 a.m. Oh, I've got it. I'm telling you, the love in this town is absolutely unbelievable. Let me put our hands together. We got Bobby at Televi sent in a check. I love it. Vin Galita Sushi. I love it. Who else sent in a Samani, Dominique? I'm trying to think. I'm losing my mind here. Alejandro. Alejandro. That's it. And also Santa Cruz Market. Santa Cruz Market. Right. Thank you. I'm loving it. Yes. We have the little uh, gift boxes. Coin coin boxes so coin that people boxes. can put in there. Gift spare, boxes. Coin spare boxes. Coins. Yeah, spare coins. Yeah. Spare coins. Every little bit helps. That's it. Also got to thank John Martney at the Westmont game um, uh, the, a few weeks ago. We had our uh, Laura uh, Arcadia, Arcadia and um, Ava Burford. And they were at the halftime show. And Ava that was, sang. Yeah, and she sang the national anthem. You know, we have quite... Laura? So, yeah, Laura we had did. we had our little teen queens out there, and they, they just killed it. And They got to do halftime. They did the halftime, and thank you, John. And, man, the voice of Santa Barbara, all things, all sport. John Martiny! <laughs> Woo! I tell you, I mean... AM 1290 is, is when it comes to community. That is what this station is about. And I mean, I got to thank the Baron, right? Yes. The Baron, the Baron. That's it. He is all things to Santa Barbara as far as community goes. And thanks for all the shouts to, um, you know, I, we sent a couple of um, emails to him and he definitely and reached out to the community and also did his part as far as uh, making everybody aware out there what was going on with the boys club. So thank you, Baron! All right, so we had to do a little mop up. No pun intended there. Yeah, no. Michael, what are you gonna do? Uh, no. Yeah, just, I, are you gonna announce it? Are we done yet? Because we we we've raised so much money. You're not gonna make the official deal. We're not done. Done. We're not done yet. We're not done. Done. Look at you. We're no, never done, Erica. No, we're never, we're done, never done. We're never done. All right, but we're close. We're, we're close. We're close. Okay. Little bit, little bit. All right. Well, all right. I'm gonna shut up. No, no. It's okay. It's can I rest now? You can rest. Oh, thank you. I can't. Okay, no, you can't rest. You, you can't. Okay, I can rest a little Rock bit. I can't rest. Okay. Not until they not until they have a cure for male baldness. Yeah. <laughs> we'll rest then, right, Doc? Okay. We good? We'll rest then. All right. Brian has a cure. 
Yeah. <laughs> the, the, really? Yeah, definitely. Is it? Oh, the, the leaching. Yeah. I, I don't no, know. no, 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 no. The, yeah. There's a there's an herb called hu yeah. I, It's well, in let me China. T- let me, I'm looking down there. Baldness. He's got all these oils down there. Maybe we can pop some of those things on. What do you got in there in front of you there? Doctor? I didn't bring mine today. I can't call this you is Dominique's. Here, but you're gonna officially no. be a doctor there. What? This three is or four months. this is Dominique's uh, oil. I didn't no. I didn't bring all my stuff. Okay. But this is a nice uh, essential oil blend. You're writing this book, mm, okay? And yeah. I, I mean, we we don't have to play. I got a secret because I know you're getting everything red and it's coming back and probably what because it's March so by September October you're gonna it's gonna be official how's that work how, what's it's the a long it's a long process for those that don't know doing a, uh. a PhD dissertation it takes a lot of time um, not just the writing but the, the back and forth of editing and waiting on I have three teachers who read my work and provide comments and feedback and then I have to go make changes and sometimes there's a month or two between um, pa- between p- papers so there's a lot of waiting involved and then if you do if you're working with um, participants or doing um, interviews then you have to get the international um, review board the IRB to sign off so there's a lot of um, formalities and waiting that goes into it which creates a lot more time involved um, the, the actual writing depends on the person can take not too long to, to several years um, so that's I'm just doing little by little and, and then just waiting for my teachers to get back with me so it's 2017 we're gonna knock it out of the park. so uh, 2018 graduation I'm shooting for that's in May of 2018 but I think by I'm hoping by February of two th- you know like a little less than a year that nice. it'll have all the approval and the stamps and everything done so nice. it's a long process it's f- five years in, in what? in depth psychology Oh, really? Depth Ooh, psychology. okay. So the your the the book though is about talk my to dissertation me. research. Yeah, 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 yeah. Is, is on smells, and that's why I'm always talking about essential oils and stuff. But I'm, I'm my research question is specifically about um, scent as a psychic image and um, the meaningful the meaningfulness of Here we go. scent images. <laughs> so I'm taking right. the perspective that ima- that our whole psyche is made up of images. That everything that we experience goes through our psyche. It's mediated by the psyche, and that images are what is um, first and foremost and I looked at as scent as a way we experience the world and ourselves and um, dove into meaningful scents what what are the specific um, images that we each have in our lives related to a scent that um, carry us through our life because uh, we all have a few they're not many but there's some we all can all remember certain scent experiences or memories um, that are very specific to each person. They're they're not generic, and so what what goes into the making of those images and why are those important to the to the human soul? That's my research question. Well, I can tell you for sure that uh, there are certain scents that take me right back to my childhood, yeah. and I can remember exactly where it was the last time I smelled that. Um, mm. It's unique. Yeah. Um, that that those kind of things. I, and honestly, they kind of freak me out. I'm like, like right? I haven't, I haven't, and, then, and now, why am I thinking about this person right now? <laughs> mm-hmm. it, it's that smell that's associated with it. Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah, so it's very powerful, and like you said, very, very idiosyncratic, very personal, unique to the, each person. Mm-hmm. And um, there's there's still a lot of mis- mystery about how the, that actual process forms and and the science behind olfaction. Mm-hmm. But nevertheless, it's part of our human experience, and so that's what I'm really concerned about as as being a human. That aspect, because smells tend to get kind of left behind sight and, and hearing as, as far as our senses go and so I, as depth psychology pays attention to the unknown the unseen the marginal the forgotten I felt like scents out of all of our senses were were that area that is just do, do they have about. is there is there such I mean because it's psychology too what you're dealing with yeah is there is there a scent that's associated with calming people down they say this is sure. this is a smell that that will you know that they, you, if you have kids, yeah. you know, that we should put in the boys and girls club. There's, that maybe there's, would... yeah, there, there's so much research on that, and it's a it's a very important topic. Everything from therapy to um, to retail and marketing, um, what sense affect how sense affect people, right? Um, but as it turns out, um, despite so much uh, popularity with uh, particular smells such as lavender or. Um, uh, peppermint or things like that. Um, the scent in and of itself is meaningless. It, it has to have a connection to a context. Mm-hmm. Now, the reason why lavender works so well is because we we believe and we've had prior learning that 
lavender equals relaxation. And so prior to even smelling it, we already have a sense that it's going to relax us. So there's something of a, a real placebo effect that actually our beliefs do affect it. But there's no universal anything. There's no universal bad smell. There's no universal positive or, or pleasant smell. It's based on our experience and learning. Um, so if you if you wanted to have a smell that was in, let's say, the, um, the Boys and Girls Club that everyone could identify with, you would want to have like a, a nice party or something very happy and lively and then introduce that that unique it has to be kind of a, a strange or unique something something they haven't smelled before introduce that at the time of a very happy event and that association w- most likely will have a, a stronger effect on, on being connected to that smell um, so there's no universal uh, sense to to the contrary that we might think. So, Brian, what con- what part of the brain? I would think the amygdala uh, would be yep, the part uh, that That's would- a part of it. That's given a lot of attention. The, the brain stem, um, the amygdala is uh, one part of it, um, considered the emotional brain. But actually, other, other parts of the brain are much more involved, too. That's that's part of it. That's, I'd yep. like to hear more about that sometime. Yes, too. Thank Woo, we got it uh, coming up. Yes, All right. More, more to come. That's a lot more to come. So <laughs> nobody go anywhere. This is fascinating. Okay. I'm so happy you came in today. This is Erica Saldo. We're going to take a short little break. We'll be back with more after these messages. We are back, and this is the Santa Barbara Teen Sports Radio Show. I am your host, Erica Saldo, the Queen of Teen. Please tune in every single Tuesday at 9 a.m. Dominique, you had a question. Well, um, we had kind of talked about this before, Brian, just a little bit about what you were studying and so forth. And so I started integrating it. I do a lot of, some of my consulting is accounting work. So you think that's kind of boring. You sit on the computer and stressing about deadlines and so forth. So when there's a particular task that I have to do that's very difficult, there's there's one particular smell that I have now incorporated into getting my work done because the smell for me is very beautiful and happy. And sometimes what I have to finish on this deadline is it's kind of difficult, but the smell keeps my spirits uh, going and open and happy. And I know that that's keeping my neocortex alive and awake because meeting deadlines, you know, your your limbic brain kicks in and you, you hit the old part of your brain. So I really appreciate you sharing what you're studying about smell. And um, you said that it needed to be something unique yeah. and so what I did was I introduced that smell to myself while I was experiencing something happy and now I grab it only for that time period in the month when I'm doing that one activity. That's the perfect example. So for, for students uh, kids out there or anybody that's that's wanting to incorporate um, sense into uh, memory or studying or things like that you have to take uh, a, an unusual smell, something that you're not quite uh, familiar with and and pair it with a specific subject. So you have one smell for math, maybe one smell for English or something like that. And you only use that for when you're studying that particular smell. And that will form an association to that. So that's how you can use them for memory or test taking. Mm-hmm. Um, or it could be for anything, for relaxation, for stressful. Keep it in your car. Like this is the scent for when I'm in traffic. And uh, you make it personal. You make it your own. But it has to be kind of unique or strange. And you have to pair it. Um, once an association is formed, it's very difficult to unlearn it. So just be aware that that's that's going on but that's a great uh, example Dominique and, I, and how the, that can happen I, I look at things though I mean not to take the flip side of things but right. you know the flip side of it though is I, I look at you know like we were talking about it like guys coming back from war yeah. you know and that like they can't go to like a barbecue mm-hmm. you know or something like that and I, I and Dominique knows this about me I mean there's certain things I cannot smell yeah, like I have to sick, leave. If it you get just, sick off of, of a food, uh, yeah. it's very There's hard to unlearn things. that. Yeah. If you, um, I mean, if you, I'm, you I shut know, down. Yeah. Many That's many bad. smells can be paired yeah. with a negative association, yeah. and again, those are very hard to unlearn as well. Yeah. And um, but that's part of our human experience too, isn't it? Right. Um, there's w- there's research done and on how to change those, but it's not easy, especially with PTSD and things that right. it's in the body. No matter what you think about it, the body reacts to it automatically. Mm-hmm. And, can you um, use very it for aversion therapy? Yeah, you. I mean. You can try, but um, again, it's it's the early uh, early learning that's okay. paired with it. Um, oh, nice. Very much like an animal, where we have that sensibility to us mm-hmm. still, like a, as an animal. 
Well, I've been trying to train the ants in the kitchen <laughs> to yeah. respond to peppermint and not yeah. come yeah. in. They were having peppermint, peppermint parties, okay? <laughs> yeah. Peppermint <laughs> patty parties. They're, oh. they're working on it. They're working well, on it. She thinks like she Googles it, right? As bay leaf. They invited all their friends. There was 10 trillion peppermint <laughs> patty yeah, parties yeah, yeah. all in the kitchen. We had every ant from the block. <laughs> well, that didn't work. <laughs> well, I think they're okay. relatives of yeah. mine. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah right. Some are at my house, too. Yeah. <laughs> It's called the morning slaughter. <laughs> oh, man, I'm sorry. Yeah. I did talk to them, but I don't speak ant very well. Yeah, they got their own language. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they do. You know, it's interesting that you call it smell as opposed to scent. Well, there, there's many words, isn't it? There's fragrance, aroma, odor, olfaction, yeah. stench, right? Each word has a, a connotation. There's some that are neutral, other that are more mm-hmm. positive or negative. But yeah. the more science mm-hmm. yields olfaction, uh, but I, I like the the word um, scent. It mm. has a it has a more of a neutral kind yeah, of ring to like it because the scent could be mm. unpleasant. Was, it could be pleasurable. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It could be disgusting. It could be mm. uh, beautiful. That's that's my next chapter actually. Mm. Is the the aesthetics of scent? What makes a scent beautiful? So mm. on that note, we can leave you all wondering what is your scent that that brings beauty into your life. Go find right. it. All right, pick, let's go around the room. What's your favorite uh, fragrance? Dominique already knows what yours is. It's not peppermint. <laughs> no, I find sandalwood really beautiful. Yeah, yeah. What's yours? Michael. Cedar. 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 Oh, lavender. Lavender. Onions frying in chicken fat. Yes. <laughs> oh, Onions good. frying Bread. in chicken fat. Mine said air conditioning in the car. Air <laughs> conditioning yeah. in the car. Very good. Very good. Kevin, what's yours? Me? I don't have a particular. Yeah. Should I go with just random stuff? Yeah. Pizza? Pizza? Uh, <laughs> I like cilantro. Pizza. <laughs> he likes pizza. Uh, Nico likes pizza. Uh, All right, we'll I close on. Pizza. Michael Baker, we love you. You kicked it. Thank you. Thank you. United Thank Boys you and Girls. Girls Club could still use a little bit of help. Santa Barbara, we love you. God bless you. See you next week.